Today's April 1st, 2018, and this is episode 90 of Plane Savers. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully, you like that um, uh, thumbnail. Happy April Fools. Uh, I'll probably be hiding a little April Fool stuff in throughout the video. Uh, I'm not very good at April Fools. Usually, usually I have good ideas around December, and then I'm like, yes, it's going to be awesome. Actually, I have a really good one this year, and I'm like, oh, it's too early. And then April comes very, very quickly. So we are here outside. Uh, that's the Basler DC3, not uh, Joe's new DC3. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you guys uh, are okay with it. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, Ronnie's here. He's just dropping off uh, an electric engine. So let's go talk to Ronnie. Uh, he, yes, uh, I guess on Friday, uh, yeah, Friday afternoon, uh, they have loaded up the sea can in Red Deer. So they actually used a couple uh, forklifts and uh, yeah, and got the sea can onto the trailer. The trailer is arriving in Montreal tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Benoit's there. He's got to have uh, the crane ready. I'm going to hopefully get some footage from Benoit. Ronnie's gonna give us an update when he's gonna hit the road, when he's gonna to get to Montreal. The date that Ronnie tells us is the date Stella and I are gonna be there the day before, if that makes sense. Uh, it is freezing, minus eight degrees Celsius, minus, or plus, plus 18 degrees Fahrenheit. My hands are freezing, there's snow on the ground. Uh, this is a real life April Fools from Mother Nature. But uh, here, let's go find Ronnie and uh, see what he has to say. So we got Ronnie, Ronnie, where, uh, where are you coming in from? I just came from Red, uh, Red Deer. I brought this second airplane engine up. I brought up another electric engine. I'm gonna drop it off here and then head back to Red Deer, grab my trailer, my fifth wheel, and then I'll start making my way to Quebec. So uh, I guess the main question is, sorry about the wind noise, folks. Uh, the main question is, what day do you think you'll be getting to Quebec? Today's the first. So today's Tuesday, April 1st. What day do you think? Probably by about the 6th, about the 6th. Okay, so the 6th, so... It's going to be like a three-day drive, eh? Out of, oh. r r r out of Red Deer. You still got to get back to Red Deer? Yeah. Okay, so Stella and I will plan to be there before the 5th, or around then. And uh, yeah, I'll go start booking tickets. And uh, yeah, so uh, you excited to get everything started? Yeah, it'd be nice to get going down there and see, see what we got before we get, you know, get going on it. Okay. Make her happen. Cool. Well, thanks, Ronnie. I'll let you get back to her. Ronnie's unloading the engine, and then, uh, yeah, then he's gonna hit the road. And uh, let's go back and hang her warm up, Ben, because it is not April Fools. It is the snow is crazy out here right now, folks. Uh, the wind is crazy. It is not warm. Uh, so hopefully you're enjoying my torture. Okay, so let's head off to um, where should we go? Let's go see Jason in uh, New Zealand. He's got a, a sneak peek at the DC3 uh, a cafe. Let's go check him out right now. Hey Mikey, I'm on a place called Mangaweka in New Zealand. Um, this is our other DC3 that's a restaurant, um, similar to the one that you showed on one of your uh, Plane Savers episodes in McDonald's in a place called Taupo. It's about a 70 k's north of here. But I'll swing around so you can have a decent look at this one. Uh, this one came from the same company as the one at the McDonald's restaurant, as a field air. Um, airframe, you can see the registration up the back and I'll forward you some other information around its, its history. Um, Apologise for the road noise, it's our state highway beside this one here. You haven't been able to get into this one for the last three or so years but last time I was inside it it was relatively complete. Um, the only thing that's missing is the engines. So thank you Jason in New Zealand for sending that awesome video. Uh, that's two uh, DC3 restaurants in New Zealand, uh, but Jason is saying that one is currently closed, but still hopefully one day I'll get to New Zealand. Check out those those two, the McDonald's DC3, which is obviously my favorite in the world, uh, and then all the guys down there restoring P40s, Spitfires, and everything down there. Whew. New Zealand is a hot spot for aviation. So uh, I want to touch on, I want to give some props to some uh, April Fool stuff uh, that has happened today, especially the Canadian, well actually the Canadian Aviation April Fools. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Snowbirds. The Snowbirds did a very cool uh, 
uh, paint strip version, new color scheme of their birds. Um, WestJet, oh my God, WestJet's video. I, sh I shared this on the YouTube community forum. WestJet's uh, Flyer Festival, making fun of uh, the Fire Festival. Super cool, WestJet did an amazing. WestJet is the king, the king of uh, April Fool's jokes. Whew, who else do we got here? We have, um, oh, we have the, the F-18 demo team. They did a Harry Potter uh, paint scheme on their F-18. And then my personal favorite, um, the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum uh, has uh, decided to make their D-Day bird Pinocchio using the Starfighter nose. Yes, the Starfighter nose. So everything goes back to the Starfighter. Isn't that funny? But uh, big props to Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum. Very good idea. I might steal that one next year. Uh, yeah, so as I get back in the office, uh, speaking of museums in Canada, segue, let's go see our buddy Gabe. He is outside with a P-51 Mustang. Let's go check him out right now at Gatineau, Quebec. Today is March 23rd, and this is another episode of Plane Savers Quebec Edition. What's up, Plane Savers? Here we are uh, in Vintage Rings of Canada again. Uh, quick video today. Um, we have actually brought all of our airplanes outside, as you can see. We are doing kind of a hangar cleanup day. And I wanted to give you a little bit of an inside look on our P 51 Mustang. So, what we have here is a P 51D Mustang. It's an American design for the British. It was one of the, one of those even though it was probably the best fighter during the war, next to the Spitfire, which we have right there. Yeah, this model uses a Merlin engine. It's actually built by Packard in the United States. This aircraft can produce upwards of a thousand horsepower. It could fly at ridiculous speed, and it was the first laminar flow wing, which is a type of wing that makes it go pretty fast. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, hope you liked the quick update with our P-51 Mustang. I uh, hope that you enjoyed it. Well, thank you Gabe for that update uh, from the Mustang. And uh, yeah, it's been a little while. That was, uh, I forgot that video in my Instagram for a while, but uh, better late than never. Stella is here doing all the tedious work, all the receipts and preparing everything for Montreal. How's it going Stella? I'm always good. Yeah. So Stella's working on uh, all the correspondence with the volunteers. So Stella, how many volunteers uh, do you think we have got uh, in your database? Uh, in the system, I think there's 47 right now, but there is a few open spots, which I'm unsure about right now because I don't speak French. So <laughs> I have to figure uh, some emails out what they mean, but Google Translate helps me a lot. So. Well, that's good. Um, so, uh, can you explain to people that, uh, you know, there's a lot of people, of course, that haven't signed up for volunteers. What is the process that you're going through right now uh, with the volunteers, like uh, questionnaires and that kind of stuff? So first of all, I want to say that um, I already love all the volunteers I'm working with, even if I haven't met them yet. <laughs> um, they're all pretty amazing people, and the background stories that they have are just fantastic. Um, but to get back to your question, um, the process we're going through is um, we set up a Google Sheets or an Excel sheet, um, however you want to call it, and we made a list of people um, and their skills, if they can bring tools, um, if they stay at the location or if they're from further away and need housing and stuff like that. Most of them are actually really, really good and they will take care of their own expenses and housing, um, which makes a lot of sense for us because um, that's less work for us than that we can invest into the aircraft. Um, yeah, and once we have that list set up, which is the case right now, we uh, send an email out to the people and said, hey, uh, we're coming down to Montreal soon and we are scheduling how everything works around the aircraft and how it looks airside because Mikey and I, we haven't seen the aircraft yet. So we don't, I mean, we've seen it before, but we don't know how it looks at the new location. So um, we have to check that out. And then de depending on that and what Ronnie thinks, we need to uh, figure out how we actually start working on it and with who and when and figure all that out and then reach out to the guys again and uh, see who uh, comes around the corner and helps us. 
So guys, to put that in just a little bit of a perspective is that, that there's just about 50 people, probably even with some people that are communicating with me directly, there's over 50 people uh, and to organize 50 people is a little bit of a headache. So a little bit of patience when it comes to that kind of stuff is super, super helpful. Stella's working really hard on that. Uh, yeah, so we know, I just spent 53 minutes on the phone uh, with Air Canada. Uh, we wanted to uh, fly WestJet because there was uh, some issues with some of the Air Canada flights uh, traveling with dogs. But I luckily, I on with 53 minutes on the phone with Claire from Air Canada. So if anybody's at the Air Canada call center watching this, say hi to Claire for us. She really helped us out. Uh, it was very tricky because one thing I learned is dogs, uh, especially in the wintertime, certain airplanes don't have... Uh, heated cargo department uh, cargo compartments um, for so for example the the flight that I wanted at Yellowknife was uh, Yellowknife uh, Vancouver with a CRJ 900 and then Vancouver to Montreal uh, with a 787 and that would have been the perfect uh, I guess the short, shortest amount of time for the dog and blah 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 and price too is the cheapest um, but uh, the CRJ 900, uh, they don't accept animals in the cargo co the cargo compartment uh, below minus zero. And so even though it's forecasted to be about minus four on Friday and above zero during the day, if, it, if we were below zero, we would run the risk of not getting the animals. So I had to talk with Claire and we talked through it is we'd have to take a Dash 8 uh, Q400 at a yellow knife which leaves at 2 p.m. because the Dash 8 Q400 has a heated cargo hold and on top of it you're only allowed two animals total in the cargo uh, so I signed up Stuka and then we go to Edmonton and then we jump on to uh, Airbus A320 which has uh, a stipulation because their cargo hold uh, goes to about plus two degrees uh, so you're allowed animals on that, but they have to be hardy animals. So luckily, Stuka is a yellow knife dog. So as you can see, it's quite complicated um, right now to ship animals, especially when it's cold. And I just learned too, if it's above 29.5 degrees Celsius, you can't ship an animal because it's too hot. So this is crazy. I know I'll be mumbling about animals here, but that's just part of it to get Stuka down there. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking. But yeah, WestJet, on the other hand, was a better option overall for animals uh, because of the aircraft type, the 737 and the uh, um, Q400. But uh, I, the timing, it was from Yellowknife to Montreal because of how the connections work, was about 19 hours. So uh, we're doing it less than eight hours on Air Canada, 19 hours on WestJet, uh, so yeah. So there we go. Prices weren't too bad. Prices on the tickets were about $500 uh, one way, which isn't bad from Yellowknife, especially uh, that, uh, you know, the North has some of the most expensive tickets in the world. So everything's good. So hopefully that made sense. Volunteers, dog, uh, we have a date. So we're going to be landing in Montreal Friday night, uh, midnight, uh, Montreal time. And uh, yeah, and then Ronnie's going to be arriving on Saturday, the next day. Uh, so Benoit and Nick are going to have the sea can ready. Ronnie's going to show up. We're going to set Ronnie up. Uh, and then uh, Saturday is going to be like a setup day. Sunday, I think we're going to be off to the races. And then Sunday, Monday, uh, we're going to sit down and try to figure out a good volunteer schedule. And then everybody's in the mailing list that are volunteers. And then we're going to go, this is what we're going to do. These are the dates. Do they work for you? Because ultimately, you guys are the volunteers. Uh, it has to work for you guys as well. And uh, I understand a lot of times it might not work for everybody, but those are the dates. Uh, and then open houses. Uh, I explained a little bit on the live stream, but again, right now, we're going to have uh, most likely Saturdays. We're going to have open houses maybe twice a month or maybe even every Saturday. Depends how it goes. Um, where everybody that wants to see the airplane can come in for a specific time, say 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., um, you can come visit the airplane and stuff. So if you can't volunteer for any reason, um, I know a lot of volunteers are saying uh, they're in their 80s and, and stuff like that. So uh, they, they want to just come check the airplane out. And this airplane is your guys's 
as much as mine, maybe not legally, but in the heart it is because of all the time, effort, uh, donations, views, clicks, comments, love, support, emails, Instagram, Twitters, everything. So thank you guys for everything. Um, I think we're just going to end the episode here. Uh, what is today? Wednesday. So we're going to have only a couple more things, and then we're going to be off to the races. So, uh, yeah, we think so. I love this airplane. Look at it. Right there. There it is. <laughs> it's not. It's not Wednesday. April Fools. Bye. <laughs>